Hey, what's up guys? It's Darkroom Duels, and today I'm doing a Blackwing deck profile. So these Blackwings I actually carried to my local ARG tournament, and I actually topped and took first place. So my, if you guys were curious, my matchups were Blue Eyes Chaos Max round one, which I 2-0'd, Cosmos I 2-0'd, Endymion I 2-0'd, and then my final match was against Endymion, and I went 2-1. You can actually check out that uh, final round as a featured match over on my channel. I just uploaded that if you guys want to check that out. Um, and definitely check out my channel, Dark Arm Duels, down in the description below so you guys can get all the up-to-date Yu-Gi-Oh! content that I'll be posting. So thank you very much for Malco40 for letting me post this out on your channel. I really appreciate it. And let's get straight on into this deck profile. So I even have built a side deck. I didn't really side all that much in this tournament. It was kind of a smaller ARG, just four, just like eight or ten people or so. It wasn't really big, but we did have uh, four rounds, which was really cool. So let's get straight on in this deck and I'll show you guys what I was playing with a little explanation of the cards and why I played them at the ratio. So first off we're going to be playing three Chris the Crack of Dawn. You have to play three Chris the Crack of Dawn in my opinion. Some people play two. I think three is the best number. It's kind of like Bore the Spear but you can only special summon it once per turn. It also has the added effect that once per turn it cannot be destroyed by spell or traps which is really cool. Uh, and it's plus the biggest body you have in the deck, so it searches and goes through back down your ladder with Black Whirlwind really easily. Uh, so then we play three copies of Bore of the Spear. Bore of the Spear, if you control another Blackwing, you can special summon this card from your hand. And then because it's the Spear, it can actually do piercing damage as well. It has 1700 beater, and it's probably one of the best Blackwings we have in the deck, except for the next one that we play three of. And then it's three copies of Simo the Poison Wind. Simo the Poison Wind is a really interesting Blackwing, and you always want to open it up. Um, when you open Simo, you know you're going to have a really good time. If you control um, no monsters and have this card in your hand, you can banish another Blackwing monster in your hand and place a Black Whirlwind on your side of the field in your Spell and Trap card zone. Then send this card to the graveyard, or immediately after this card resolves, you Normal Summon it without tributing, which gives you an additional Normal Summon because you Normal Summon this by effect. Uh, which Then you can Normal Summon another Blackwing and search twice off of your Whirlwind. It's really fun when you open up this and a Whirlwind already because then you can do a double search, which is really cool. But during the end phase, you have to send the Black Whirlwind to the graveyard and you take a thousand damage, which kind of sucks, but it's not that big of a deal because you just want to get a hold of that Black Whirlwind as quickly as possible so you can start searching, go into Full Armor Master, go into Regular Armor Master, anything that you absolutely need to go into, this guy is your boy. So then I play one copy of uh, Zaphros the Elite. I actually have a German first ed copy, which is kind of funny. Funny story about this card really quick. The guy who was playing in the finals against me actually traded me this card a long time ago, and I played it against him in the first round and normal summoned it, and he picked it up and went, wow, is that my first ed German Zaphros that you have? And I was like, yeah, that's the only one in this whole, like, state just about. I mean, and I picked it up and I, I actually won game one with this card, which was just crazy. And I really enjoyed playing it against him. It was really funny. Um, but this card, basically you can return a um, card that's on your side of the field to your hand and then inflict 400 damage to yourself and then special summon this card from the graveyard, but you can only do that once per turn. Not a big deal, but you just want to play it as one of because you never, you're never going to get that effect off twice because it's a once per duel effect. Then we play three copies of Oster the South Wind. I really love this card. It's a really good card. It's kind of like Blizzard the Far North in a way. Uh, it cannot be special summoned. Or, and when it's normal summoned, you get to target a banished level four lower Blackwing monster, which combos really well with your Simo the Poison Wind because you banish normally a level four Blackwing off of it, like a Bora or a Chris or even Zaphros off of it. And then you normal summon this and it special summons that one, which can be used for Link Fodder or... XYZ summons or even your synchro summons that you need to and then it also has the effect of that You can banish her in the graveyard to activate one of the effects either place black feather counters or on blackwing dragon You control or equal to the number of cards um, Your opponent controls or place a wedge counter in each face up monster your opponent controls which combos really well with full armor master as well And can really help you out with combos and stuff like that being able to take your opponent's monsters with full armor master then I play three copies of Gale the Whirlwind. I know some people play two. I still, I really think that Gale's a good three of in the deck. It halves an opponent's monster's attack, and if you control another Blackwing monster, you can just special summon it directly from your hand. It's easy to search because it's at three, 1300, um, and it's really easy to search with any of these up to search your Gale, and it's a good open card. Like, if you open up Gale and a Blackwing monster, you can just summon out, like, your armor master really fast and then your opponent normally sometimes they don't actually have an out to that armor master some decks don't have outs to armor master because he can't be destroyed by battle and you just win off the armor master like for instance chaos max in the first round i just put armor master on the field and he couldn't draw his creature swap and i just won off of the armor master because i had gale and bora in hand first turn 
Then I play one Gallus, the Midnight Sun. Basically, you could special summon this card from your hand if you only control one Blackwing monster. It's just used for combos to be able to synchro into with a three and a three or a three and a four to go into eights or to go into um, sevens or sixes. Then I play one Steam the Cloak. Steam the Cloak is kind of here for the token generation. I was playing two of it and I just took one out because I wanted to play some other stuff that I have a crazy tech at the end of the video, guys, that you should totally use in your Black Wings that just won me. It won the whole tournament that I'll show you at the end of the video. Then I play one copy of Hamat in the Dust. Hamat in the Dust comes in really handy because it can uh, increase its level by the level of one other Blackwing monster you control, which is pretty cool. Like if I have Oster on the field, I can special summon Hamatin, target the Oster, and make it level six, and then synchro the six and the four together to make full armor master, which can really, really help out in some tight situations. Two copies of Oster, the Squall. This card is really used to just kind of, it's your last search that you're ever going to search in the deck because it has the lowest attack points. And plus, it's a level one tuner monster, so you can go six to sevens or seven to eights in your synchro plays. It also can special summon itself from the hand if you control another Blackwing monster, which is really cool. And then after you do special summon it, if it's used for synchro material, you can change a monster your opponent controls um, to a different position, which is pretty cool. Then I play Double Effect Failure. This card was really, really clutch. I really recommend playing Double Effect Failure. And then for the last three cards that I played for Monsters, I played Triple Ash. Now you can change these out for any hand traps you want, but I really felt like Double Effect Failure and Triple Ash really assisted me. But depending on what your particular area is or what you're trying to counter, um, you're probably going to want to change out those Effect Failures for something else. But I really thought that Triple Ash and Double Failure really helped me out the most in the whole tournament. Like I always opened up like two hand traps and I had my opponent like I had them because I had two negates in hand when they first started and then I could go for my OTK next turn, which really helps a lot. So that's it for the main deck monsters, guys. Let's get into the spells. We actually don't play that many spells or traps. Like the majority of the deck, as you can see, is monsters. So we're going to be playing just a few spells and traps. So we're going to be playing Triple Allure of Darkness. Allure of Darkness is here just to get us to our copies of Black Whirlwind to do our combo pieces to be able to just continue our plays. Three copies of Call by the Grave. Call by the Grave just stops our opponent from hand trapping us, which is really assists, which really, really assists us a lot to be able to stop our opponent from ash blossoming us and stuff like that. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is it has to be a monster in the graveyard that you banish um, and not like a spell or trap. Then I play Triple Whirlwind. You need Triple Whirlwind in this deck because it is essential to have tri or it is essential to draw into Whirlwind or have it for Simo to be able to just put it on board and just constantly get pluses off of this card. If you get one search off of it, it's already broke even. If you get more than one search off of it, you're just getting more pluses off of that. If you open two, you really got a good combo. It's like on par with me. Like it's a little bit more of a dumbed down version of Gateway of the Six to me. Now, it's a really good card, but... You know, it has its drawbacks because you have to search one that has uh, less attack points than the previous Blackwing that you normal summon. But there's so many different ways to normal summon Blackwings in this deck that it just makes for so many great plays. Like Simo and Nothung just make this card live all the time. So that's it for the spells, guys. Let's get into the traps. So for the traps, we're going to be playing Double Blackbird Close. Blackbird Close really came in clutch. Because this card is just so good to be able to negate monster effects. This card, this deck actually has a lot more negations than all people would like to admit. And with just like one or two more cards, this deck could be really meta again. And I really think it will become meta again once they release. And now they're never going to stop giving Blackwing support. Come on now. Um, but this card also lets you special summon the Blackwing Dragon monster from your extra deck, which is really, really busted. And I do actually play one copy of Blackwing Dragon in there just for that. And it actually came up in the tournament where I special summoned Blackwing Dragon and just ended my opponent's game or ended his whole career in that one moment with Blackwing Dragon. Then my particular card that I played that actually won me the tournament was three copies of Eradicator Epidemic Virus. When I walked into the tournament, I noticed that there was a Sky Striker player and an Endymion player. Uh, and I just realized if I play Eradicator, I can win because <laughs> tribute one of my big black wings and then just my opponent has nothing that they can do really. So that's why I played Triple Eradicator. Eradicator was MVP 
all night. All night, it was good. Now, I know there's some new rulings about this card, but that's not a big deal, because really, what I'm doing is, is getting rid of their pendulum scales, and I can get a little bit of knowledge, because they can say, well, I don't have spells, and then I can count the cards in their hand that they're playing Endymion, and I can go, okay, you have three cards in your hand, I know they're all monsters, or hand traps, or something like that, and I can deal with it later. But I know that they discarded all their spells, because everybody was really fair at the tournament. So, that's it for the main deck, guys. Let's get into the extra deck, and then I'll really quickly go over the side deck. So for the extra deck, we're going to be playing double uh, Blackwing Full Armor Master. I felt like I went into this, I went into this like three times in the tournament. It was really good. Basically, it's unaffected by all their card effects. This card has four effects. It's unaffected by all their card effects. Each time a monster your opponent controls activates the effect, you get to place a wedge counter on the opponent's monster. Um, and then after that card resolve, after that resolves, once per turn, you can target a monster your opponent controls and take it. And then it also has the effect of, during your invades, you destroy all monsters your opponent controls that have wedge counters if you want to. Which is really busted. This card is so good. This card made Black Wings really good all night. Um, one copy of Beals. This card I use against Chaos Max because uh, Chaos Max just has a really bad time dealing with Beals. If you just put Beals on the field, if they don't draw a creature swap, you can attack into their Chaos Max, take the thousand, not a big deal and then swing over their Chaos Max the next turn, or even deal yourself a little bit of damage, Beals gains attack, swing at their Chaos Max, and you win. I mean, like, they can't deal with Beals once you summon it, except for Creature Swap. That's their only out. And the guy that I was playing against played Creature Swap, but he never drew it. Then I play one copy of Ghost Rare. I know that Ghost Rare is so pretty. Uh, Ghost Rare First Ed, Blackwing Dragon. This card comes in clutch with Blackbird Close. I never summon it unless I use Blackbird Close. Double, um... Obsidian Hawk Joe. Hawk Joe is really good in the deck. I feel like I could have done with just one. So if there's something that you guys want to take out and put one Hawk Joe in, be my guest. Hey, put in Borlode Savage Dragon probably. Um, drop one of these and put Borlode Savage Dragon. I played two thinking I was going to need two, but I never ground out a game. Like I was finishing my matches in like 20 minutes where we had a 40 minute timer and I was finishing them in 20 because it was just OTK after OTK with me. And I never had the opportunity to really go in for the second one. But you can. But basically this card's monster reborn for level 5 or higher wing beast monsters. And if it's going to be targeted, you can target another wing beast you control instead. Or another black wing you control. One copy of Rikiri, this card was really good all night too. Uh, I went into this like one time. But it destroys monster, or destroys cards your opponent controls up to the number of black wings you control. Which is really good. It can make your opponent minus really quickly. Chidori, Chidori... Um, I went into it once, and I misplayed. I should not have treated it with Eradicator, but I did. For every Blackwing in your graveyard, it gains 300 attack, and then if it's destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can add a, or you can special summon a Wing Beast Synchro Monster from your graveyard, which comes in handy sometimes. Armor Master was the best card all night, besides Eradicator. Uh, this card basically says you can't destroy it by battle. Put a Wedge Counter on it if it battles, and then you can rip the Wedge Counter out and make your opponent's monster go down to zero. And then I played one copy of Nuthung. Nuthung was good too. Nuthung basically is just my only other synchro monster. Basically, Nuthung is synchro summon it, inflict 800 points of damage to your opponent, decrease your monster by 800 points, and then you get an additional normal summon. Baguska, just to stall out my opponent in case I need it. Um, I actually had a moment where I put this in defense mode and then switched it to attack and OTK my opponent with Baguska on board, which is really weird. Ice Beast Zero Fine, this card is really good in the deck because it just skill drains the whole field. Exiton Knight, just in case you need to blow for board. Boral Load, because Boral Load is here in case you need to take your opponent's monsters. And then We Witch, just to boost your monsters. And I don't really Link Summon that much in this deck. It's kind of weird. Like, I used to Link Summon this deck a lot, but I don't as much. And if you guys have a Link Monster that you want to put in here, definitely put it in here instead. Maybe like Nightmare Phoenix or Nightmare um, Unicorn. Maybe drop this and put Nightmare Unicorn if you want to. I'm still kind of messing around with it. I'm, I'm constantly messing around with my Black Wings because, like I said, it's my favorite deck. But right now, this is the build that I won with. So then, for the extra or for the side deck, we're going to be playing three copies of Shared Ride. This card's basically maxi, but in spell form. Um, one copy of Blizzard. I just had this in the side just in case I felt like I needed it and I was grinding out games. Hama the second Hamaten, it was just kind of here in case I needed it. A third Effect Veiler, just in case I needed it. Triple Evenly Matched, just in case my opponent was blowing me out and I needed to have the Evenly Matched just to stop them game two. Um, triple Anti-Spell Fragrance. I had this or Eradicator waiting for the Pendulum players and the Sky Striker players I knew were going to be there. And then Triple Rivalry of Warlords. Rivalry of Warlords is good because all of your monsters that you're going to be using, even the ones in the extra deck, are all Wing Beast monsters. So that's why I played Rivalry. 
So that's it for the deck, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this one. Again, thank you very much, Malco40, for letting me uh, guest upload on your channel. I'm really excited to do more work with him. Um, and it was a lot of fun taking this deck profile for you guys. I'm really excited to be, you know, topping and having this championship mat. It's the first ARG I've topped. I've topped a couple of other events, like just some locals and stuff. But this is the first, like, ARG I've topped. And I'm really glad to be able to profile this for you guys. So anyways, guys, this is Darkroom Duels. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out my channel down in the description below. And definitely check out that feature match over on my channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See you around, guys.